Hey friends, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, this is an important video I'm making today because this is what happens when a bottom end job doesn't go well. This one would not go together with just heat. So I've had emails all the time, often you guys say, hey, my bottom end didn't go together like that. What am I doing wrong? Sometimes you're not doing anything wrong, friends. Sometimes the cases just don't swell enough. So without further ado, another bottom end job. This is Hogan's 266. Um, don't panic. If your bottom end doesn't want to go together, take your time. Sometimes you got to take them back apart and do it over again. I had to do that in this case. I think I attempted it three times before I finally got it. So anyhow, friends, here's a video of me failing at a bottom end job. It does happen. One out of every 10 I do. Sometimes they are a little picky and they just won't go together. Well, here's that one. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoy this video and learn something from it. Morning everybody, how's it going? It is early, sun's just coming up. Uh, I got a bunch of running around to do starting about noon time. So I figured, well, I'm gonna jump in here really early and see if I can get this bottom end started or sorted out in Hogan's 266. The important part of any build to me is the bottom end. Uh, build a good foundation, just like building a house. Build a good foundation and that way you shouldn't have any issues. So um, this saw, uh, this saw, I mean the bearings aren't seized in it, but I figured, like I said friends, I might as well just start from scratch. That way I know what I got and we can keep going from there. Now I'm looking at these cases, they do, they definitely have been around the block, but I mean, these 266 cases are getting harder to find. I clean these up and I don't see any, you know, I don't see any major issues with them. So we're gonna go with these cases. So remember that friends, if you're, if you're building a 266 or, you know, something of this era, really check those cases over, make sure you don't have any major damage or anything that's gonna leak, because you know, it, uh, these, these cases have been around for a while. This one is an 88, so, um, 34 years old. It's been around a day or two. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys in close and let's do another bottom end. We'll start by getting these bearings out of here on both of them. And then, uh, I'll show you guys the bearings I use and, uh, gaskets and we'll get this thing ready to rock and roll. Okay guys, another week the cricket should be gone. <laughs> Hopefully next year is not a big cricket year. I'm going to bring you guys in nice and close here. I want you guys to be able to see everything that there is to see. So that's what it's all about. You got to get the shot, right? It's all about showing what I'm doing. Okay, so here's our cases. They're pretty clean now. Um, I'll wipe them down one more time after we get this off, but... Here we go, heat gun. Now, I brought my temp gun this time. Okay, I brought my temp gun this time. You guys were asking me, what temperature is the right temperature? And I'm, I was thinking 250, 275 is about where I like them, but I wanted to just reconfirm that. I just go by smell. When the oil starts to burn out of the cases and the cases start to smoke, it's hot enough. Okay, I think we're at about the right temp, maybe slightly too hot, look. Okay, we're at about 275. Okay, put this gun off, right here. I just use a socket. Now, that sounds worse than it is, but this is a sheet metal. Okay, this is a sheet metal tabletop, so it always makes everything sound like I'm wailing on it. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay, and remember, all you're doing, you're heating the case up so it expands and lets go of the bearing. I think we're good. 272. Okay. So I'd say about 275, somewhere around there. 285, 295 is probably about the perfect temp. Some guys beat these out cold, and uh, I just don't do that, friends, because I'm always worried about scratching the pocket, okay? Let's see, what do these look like now? Put your light on here. 
Okay? Notice how there's no scratch marks going front to back. That's what you want. Okay? That looks okay. These are the bearings we're going to go with on this build. SKF 6202 JEMs. They are buttery smooth. I really like these bearings. Um, I've used them quite a bit. I also use these, okay? Um, these these have the metal caging, which is a pain, all right? You gotta pop it off. Oh, this one I already did, so that's funny. But yeah, friends, these have the metal cage on them. It's kind of a pain. I prefer these because literally, look, they're ready to rock and roll out of the box, so. And I'm gonna use this gasket set. Okay, it's a highway gasket set. Um, the only part of this set, and I like to be honest, friends, no, we don't, uh, we don't sugarcoat anything here. This gasket's no good in this set. It's punched too big. Now, this is an older kit. The last round of sets I ordered, or kits, gasket sets, I ordered, this gasket was fixed. So, uh, highway's always upping their game, but this is what I generally use. Again, these seals are great, no problems with them. You guys know me, I don't usually use base gaskets, but... Okay, so, and there's your part number. Friends, these are all available uh, from wolfcreeksawshop.com. Please go and check out Wolf Creek if you need parts. You can literally, all the parts going into this build, except for a few odds and ends, are from Wolf Creek. So you guys can recreate this build at home if you choose. Please go check out Wolf Creek. They help this channel out tremendously. Okay, I'm going to get set up here and let's get these bearings. I'm going to do bearings on crankshaft, okay? You guys saw on the 288 build, I did bearings in the case, crankshaft in the bearings. Well, this time I'm going to do bearings on the crankshaft, okay? And then I'm going to install the crankshaft with the bearings in the case. Um, both ways work, um, either or, okay? So I kind of like bearings on the crankshaft because these are both... These are both straight through holes, and uh, I don't like to bolt. The seal carrier is plastic. I don't like to have that on here as a stop because they can melt. And same thing with the oil pump. I prefer to keep the oil pump off on this saw. So. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to rock and roll, and let's get a bottom end built. Okay, so I get everything ready. The old blue point channel locks. I hold my bearings with these. Okay, then you want to heat the bearing up and drop it over top of the crankshaft. Uh, I'll usually use a little uh, scotch brite and I'll just polish up where the bearings sit. Make sure there's no scores or anything on them. And then I always get a socket just in case. Sometimes the bearings cool off too quick. You might have to tap them on. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, bottom end work is 99% prep to me, okay? Just get everything lined up and ready to go. And then all you gotta do is heat things up and slide them on. Okay, let's heat up both of these and get them rocking and rolling. Okay, and I'm just gonna use this old pooling bar as a heat shield, okay? Again, I'll heat up one bearing and then the other and then drop them on. Just like this. Okay, you wanna get the inner race of that bearing nice and hot. Keep your crankshaft away so that the air doesn't blow onto it. Sometimes it'll get warm and it'll make it a little difficult. The other way, friends, is you can put the crankshaft, this, in the freezer overnight. Now, I don't do that because that involves preparation and I tend to forget, so I just use heat. Heat works fine. Okay, I'm gonna heat this up and when it's ready, I'll jump back in. Now again, when these start to stink, this is starting to stink, I'm gonna get it ready. Okay, put this down. Here's one, ready? Okay, and then just leave it. Leave it to cool off, do the other side. Just like that. That one was about 150 degrees. I don't like to overheat my bearings. Uh, I'll heat my case more than my bearings. That's just the way I am. Okay, now this one's nice and hot. Spin this around. Now, if you don't get this on quick enough, start over again. That way it won't get stuck. Okay, there you go. 
and then just let this cool off and they'll shrink on there in about 30 seconds usually. Okay, we got our cases here, ready to go. Make sure all rubber parts are taken off. I'll take this little, uh, that little piece of where your linkage goes through for your carb. Okay, now some guys will flat uh, stone these or flatten them. Um, I usually don't have a problem with that. If you're worried about your cases being warped or leaking, take them and put them on a piece of, of um, glass or granite and you know, flatten them out, shine them up with some uh, with some 600 grit or 400, whatever you want to use. Me, I just scuff them up and shine them up a little bit with Scotch Brite. I'm not too fussy with stuff, friends. As long as it's clean and shiny, okay. These cases are 30 years old. I'll go in here and make sure there's nothing left. That'll become particulate and wreck our motor. Okay, these old saws, they're usually discolored in here. You just want to make sure none of that's like grease or anything from when the saw blew up. Again, I'll rinse this off with brake clean. Okay, there's one case ready to go. Same thing, check the other case. This one's good. I'll just go in here again and make sure it's clean. It's all about getting everything clean more than anything else. When a saw has blown up, friends, to me, that's the saw you really, I mean, you want to be diligent. I'm just spraying them off. You want to be diligent with all saws, but to me, friends, you really, really want to make sure a saw that's blown up, you want to make sure that bottom end's clean and that there's nothing in it. Okay, next thing I do, I will lay out my screws. Okay, make sure all the uh, all the heads of them are clean, and stuff like that. Again, I'm just showing you guys a little bit more of a breakdown. It's all about your prep work in doing a bottom end. It's not the the assembly is the easy part. It's making sure you got everything lined up. Uh, that's the e that's the that's the part that's the most important. You don't want to be scrambling when you're using heat because then the heat will dissipate real quickly and you'll end up getting things stuck together. Okay, so I'm going to clean up all these bolts and get my gasket ready to go and let's put this thing together and then we have a bottom end. These cases will start to smoke around 245, 250. The smoke is usually an indicator they're hot enough. Let's check. Look, 244 and it's just starting to smoke. That's usually how I do it. I'm showing you guys this so that you guys have a better idea if you have a temp gun. This one came from Jason Mercer. I use it all the time. Thank you, Jason. Okay, where do we at? So you keep heating this. This is where you want to work quickly. Again, those last 15, 20 degrees take a while. I find. Now the cases won't smoke as much when uh, when they're clean. Okay, now I'm just gonna go around to the other side of the counter or the table here, and I'm gonna get my crankshaft ready. And remember to hold the crank up so that it doesn't get stuck. Okay, sometimes I've had it happen where I put it upside down and the crank gets stuck against there. You can damage your case. Okay, ready? Now, I know approximately how far these have to sit in here. There we go. After you've done enough of these, you kind of know where the bearing has to sit in regards, in relation to the inside of the case. I find these, they usually sit flush, okay? So you don't want to put it in too far. But you don't want it sticking out because then when you put your cases together, you're gonna to be fighting them. Okay, so there we go. There's the crankshaft installed on one side. Now, I gotta put my gasket. I'm gonna put my gasket and my seal in there, or my gasket maker and my gasket in there. And then we can put the other side on. I'm just going to lay this on here. Okay, now I'm just putting this sealant on here. Uh, I've been asked a lot, why do you put sealant on? You should be able to run those gaskets dry. You can. 
Um, just one of the things I do. I believe that this sealant um, is a little extra insurance policy. I don't like splitting a saw twice to fix an air leak or uh, an oil leak or whatever. I've never had an air leak. Knock on wood. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I've never had an air leak in any of my bottom ends that I've built. And I've usually, 98% of the time, sometimes I don't, but 98% of the time I do this. Okay? Just that little extra level of insurance. Okay, now I'm going to take my gasket. Now, I'm not going to put sealant on the other side until I have some heat in my other side case. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, put these on the dowels, that way they're in the right spot. I also like this stuff on here because it holds it in place so that when I'm trying to fish the other case in here, I don't have any problems with the bolt holes lining up. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat the other case quickly and get it ready to go. Oh, and then, so I'll, I'll put about 80% of the heat in this case. Then I'll put my Schmierka on here to glue it together. Then I'll finish heating this case and slip them together. That's how I've always done it. Okay, I actually grabbed my welding gloves this time. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, fumble fingers. Here we go, ready? Now you see friends, I fumbled too much. So we got to do this again. Now friends, I don't know what it is today, but these cases seem to be a little tight on these bearings we're using. So. This happens once in a while. I don't know why. And here's what I do. Drop a couple of bolts in there. Let's see if we can get this to gently pull together. If we can't, then I don't know. I haven't had this happen in a while. Um, this one's very tight, okay? So, again, there's still a lot of heat in these cases. This is good, though, that we caught this on camera. This does happen once in a while. Okay, use your bolts. Now friends, I'm not gonna lie, I tried to put this together three times now. Okay, and it just does not wanna go together. So, I'm, uh, this doesn't usually happen. But here, look, don't, don't be super worried because look, as long as there's heat in the case, this bearing will slowly get sucked up into the pocket here, okay? I'm actually glad this happened because a lot of times they just thunk together and you guys go, wow, I had problems with mine. Well, it happens. Once in a while I get one that's like this. Now you can guarantee there's gonna be side load on this bearing, friends, guaranteed. Yeah, how many times did I try and put this together? I think two times now, maybe three. Okay, there you can hear it. You can just go in the star pattern. I'm actually shocked that, I'm actually shocked that this thing just doesn't want to go together. Okay, friends, now I'm going to continue to gently cinch these down, okay? I'm not reefing on it, believe it or not. It's just, for whatever reason, the bearing's a little tighter than the pocket, and I'm having a hard time expanding the pocket enough, I guess. Keep an eye on your gap. Make sure it's continuous, which it is in this case. And I'm going to put this one in here, because I noticed that gasket's starting to get a little bit... Oh, the shape here. So we'll stick this in there. That'll help pull the case together. Oh, 
We're almost there. These cases are extremely warm. I'm actually kind of shocked. But it's okay. Like I said, once in a while you get one. That's why it's like I enjoy working on saws because you never know what a saw is going to do until you start working on it. Now, this thing's definitely going to have some side load on the bearing. Okay, and we're almost all the way together. See how there's almost no gap? Okay, look at the bottom. There you go. Again, just keep looking, making sure that your gap is the same on both sides, up and down. This is why some people advocate for pulling your cases together with the crank tools. Um, yeah, I mean, I could see if you have this happen all the time, I wouldn't want to do it this way either. Okay, about another quarter eighth of a turn. There you go. Once in a while you get one like this where the bearing pocket's really tight. That's not easy. That's not really a bad deal though. It just means you're retaining the bearing nicely. Sometimes they're really loose. Those are the ones that scare me. The ones that go together really easy are the ones that scare me. You guys go. Now you guys will see um, this thing's really out of lock right now. Hold on, I'm going to finish torquing these with sockets. Okay, I'm just going to finish tightening these down with a ratchet. These four are the ones that I worry about. These are good to tighten down too, but it's the ones around the crankshaft that I worry about the most, okay? Now, as you guys can see, this thing's way off that way. So while there's still heat in the case, I'm gonna take my trusty, I'll zoom you guys back here, my trusty dead blow, right here, okay friends? And we know we want the crank to go that way. So I'm going to take it again. Ready? And move it over a little bit. Okay. Now that just relaxed literally everything. Now again, friends, sometimes bottom ends don't go together smooth. You guys have seen me do a bazillion of them smoothly. This was that one that didn't want to cooperate. You guys can see I got a little bit of glue on the, on the rod. I'm just going to pull that off. Now, friends, you can see this bearing, this bearing on this side is sticking out a little bit farther than I like. Now, you can also adjust your bearings with your, with your takedown tool, right? So, watch this, friends. I'll pull that bearing into that case. This is just one of those bottom ends that just didn't want to cooperate. It is what it is. We will get it together, right? Don't get frustrated. There. There. Okay, all I did there, friends, is... I just, everything just relaxed, okay? Now again, take this, move it over. It needs to go a little bit further. We got a little bit more, just give me a second here. Okay, friends, here's our finished bottom end assembly. I put up just a little bit of oil and it's smooth as glass now. That's all that matters to me. It doesn't matter how we got here. Believe me, I was hoping this would go a little quicker than it has, but it is what it is, right? Um, don't panic, okay? You can always take it back apart if you have a problem. So, I don't know what it is about these 266s, but sometimes the crankshafts, the bearing pockets, sometimes they're a little tight, so. Okay, friends, well, we got a messy bench again, but uh, our bottom ends together. Once again, I was actually kind of happy that I caught that on video because sometimes you get these, especially these 66s, I don't know what it is about them. Sometimes you get them and the bearing pockets are a little bit tighter and you, you end up, it, it's they just don't want to go together. So that's when, make sure they go together enough that you can put screws in there and pull the cases together while they're hot, okay? A little bit of a pain because the bearings tend to want to move um, everything kind of gets a little funky when you do it that way, but 
Again, with a combination of your case splitter and a hammer, you can move things over and adjust things and get them where you want them. Okay, now I'm gonna let this sit now for the rest of the night or the rest of the day, let it dry. And then next time you guys see this, I want to address the uh, the AV mounts in the saw. I want to make sure that they're, that they're stiff enough. And then after that, we can put a top end on this and start getting our timing numbers. Um, I'm going to try and make this exactly the same as Harvey's build. I have never ported, I have never copied somebody else's porting. I'm going to try and set this top end up exactly like Harvey's. Will it run the same? I don't know, friends. I don't know. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.